again. This is my Rosita RA6500 amplifier. A pretty old but very very nice amplifier. I really like the way it's built, I like the way it sounds, so this is pretty much the fa my most favorite amplifier I've had so far. And I also kind of want to start to reverse engineer the schematic of it, so if anything goes wrong really bad that I can actually uh, rebuild this thing again. or just build the entire amplifier again and use it for something else. So, uh, since this is one of my most favorite amplifiers, why is it on my workbench? Well, it works. Nothing really wrong with it. But there are a few things I would like to change on this thing. Well, first of all, the story behind this thing is I found this thing with the tuner and the tape deck on eBay. So I thought, yeah, sure, why not get it? Nice vintage old amplifier. Nothing wrong with that. So I paid about 80 euros for this and uh, when I got it I was seriously disappointed. The seller lied about a lot of things. First of all he told me all the lights would be working on all systems. All systems worked without any issues whatsoever. And that the seller was a non-smoker. All of those things were lies. The thing smelled horrible for when I got it. It smelled so disgusting I had to wash out of the entire case, inside and outside, just to get rid of that putrid cigarette smell. It was terrible. Uh, second of all, the lights didn't work. A lot of the lights didn't work, and this one, after I swapped the bulbs, uh, it actually switched itself off because the resistor blew up. Someone had a go at this already and installed the resistor that was too weak. And, well, the tape recorder didn't work at all, the tuner had a dial that didn't work, so, so much for fully functional and everything, mm, not really. So I ended up paying a lot less because, well, there's eBay support. Well, anyways, I'm gonna show you a few things that are wrong, are wrong with this thing and that I really want to go ahead and fix now. The first issue is one of the view meters, which is this one for the right channel. Um, unfortunately, I cannot find those view meters anywhere or view meters that are size-wise anyway similar to these. If someone maybe knows where can get these exact view meters, that would be great because this one doesn't work and it just overshoots like crazy when even the uh, tiniest amount of bass is on it. Uh, yeah, and that is actually the view meter. That is not any of the driver circuitry in here. That's bad. Um, these switches aren't that great, but I don't use them that often, so it doesn't really matter. Everything switches properly, and uh, there's nothing wrong there. I have to clean these two potentiometers again, because, well, uh, the crackling issues I had, they're back again. Not as insane as I got it. I mean, the first time I powered this thing up, it didn't even work. I got no audio and anything out of it, because, well, this thing had so severe contact issues that you couldn't get a clear sound at all out of it. But yeah, nothing too difficult, just use some contact cleaner and you're good. But I'm probably going to swap out that potentiometer in here because there is something seriously wrong with it. There are certain areas where it just refuses to work, you have audio all over the place, so it maybe just be better to swap the whole thing out or just disassemble it and clean it very good. What else? Well, I have to replace the screws. Uh, these are just typical M4 screws. You can get them pretty easily. I'm just going to use machine screws. Now one thing is, since this is a very old unit, um, late 60s, early 70s, I think uh, 1969 this one was built. Um, they had a different standard back then for the connectors. As you can see, we are using Dean connectors. Now these are actually awesome because if you hook up like tape recorders and other stuff you only need one cable instead of four for doing a recording and also uh, having audio at the same time and uh, it actually gives you a small hint that you are supposed to unplug the device if you're going to open it up they don't say no user serviceable parts inside this thing is user serviceable it even has a fuse that you can swap out uh, another thing is we have Dean speaker plugs, the, which are these. I absolutely hate these because they wear out super fast, or, well, they wear out now because, well, <laughs> this thing is pretty old, way older than me, and, uh, yeah, it definitely has gotten quite a bit of use out of it, so, of course, the springs which are inside here are all worn out. 
I did once uh, because I was really pissed that this uh, the right channel wasn't working at all. So I just uh, bodged these uh, laboratory plugs in here. But uh, yeah, I'm going to do that way more professional now. Like, that I will actually put a proper plate here and remove all of these and have it all nicely with this style of plug. Because that's pretty much what I usually always use uh, for the speakers and I never had issues with that at all. Now, another thing is, well, I need, a, I need to add a relay. Why do I need to add a relay? Well, the issue is, uh, if you turn the thing on, you get a quite big thud out of the speakers and that isn't really good. It can damage the speakers and especially since I don't want my nice old free speakers that I got to be destroyed. Uh, and I still want to use them for quite some time. I am going to add a small circuit in here that just triggers this relay, delayed after you turn the thing on. So that, that banging sound you get, so that the amplifier can, can switch on, you would get that banging sound, but the relay switches on after that, so you don't get that huge thud. But also, why not make that thud if you turn the thing off? Because the relay switches off before the amp switches off. I mean, there are a lot of capacitors in this thing, and it takes this thing a while to actually shut off, so you also get a big thud if you turn the thing off. And that's why this is going to help out nicely. Now, this relay is probably way overkill for this. This is a 24-watt uh, relay, so yeah, this thing is set to 12 volts. I'm just going to use the lightning circuitry because I'm also thinking about swapping the light bulbs in here with some white LEDs since, well, on that thing it worked really well because, well, you couldn't, you can't get the light bulbs for that stereo there anymore so I had to <laughs> do something else since they were blown. And I gave this thing an attempt by using the T10 uh, LED version which um, is actually a car light bulb that you usually use to illuminate the um, like small things like the trunk or uh, the glove box or the small light you have uh, on top, well, above you. So not really bright, fairly dim and the light bulbs themselves are pretty tiny. But yeah, LED is definitely better and you don't have to open this thing up every few years just to replace those freaking tiny bulbs. So that will definitely be an advantage. So yeah, if that works, definitely gonna do it. If it doesn't work, well, then I'm just going to modify this thing back to light bulbs. Not a big, not a big issue at all. But yeah, that's enough talking from me. Let's actually go and have a look inside this thing. All right, and we are in. What's quite surprising is actually there's not that insane, uh, huge amount of stuff in here. But the layout itself is actually really nice. We have our uh, input board, which is over here, with the uh, phono amplifier and some other stuff. Nice thing is that all the chips are socketed. Are they warm? No, nope, they are cold. Then we have our two main output amplifiers, which are here with the tran four transistors on them. Anything getting any hot in here? Don't worry, this thing is switched off, so I cannot get a shock from it, and everything should be dis discharged. And, no surprise, everything is cold, but yeah, of course, there was no load on this thing. Transformer, also cold, surprising, even though it is driving the uh, lights and everything. That there is the resistor I was talking about, that blue one, which blew, since some genius decided to put one in that didn't... Well, couldn't cope with the amount of current and I kind of had to hack it in there because whoever did this thing before uh, destroyed the pads on the board. So yeah, so these are the two main sections I would really like to try to um, go ahead and rebuild or just have the proper schematics of since I haven't managed to find a uh, service menu for this thing yet. And see if there's any, uh, if the, these chips are actually still being sold, or if there's any way of getting them, or also the components. Also, what's really nice, you can see that here we have a connector there, so you can loosen two screws in the back, and the whole amplifier section will just slide out. Yeah. So I'm probably just going to mount the relays onto the heatsink, since well, <laughs> this thing, in my use, it doesn't get hot at all. It most likely just gets warm, and the most heat just pretty much comes from the light bulbs. 
there's rarely an occasion where I can actually go ahead and use the full 200 watt output capability of this thing, since these two are themselves 100 watt uh, output stages. On the front we have the top thing here is our, just our switchboard for the various inputs and outputs. We have the treble, uh, the high and the bass control over here with some super funky LED magic. Ooh, isn't that fancy? Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of a ni nice touch, I have to say, and they are actually using dual potentiometers for that. Not sure if they do that because of two channels, or one is for the LEDs and one is for the other. Probably two channels and uh, some other small magic in there. And yeah. So as you can pretty much tell, this thing is just modules. Modules over modules, and you can disassemble the thing very easily, and everything is super serviceable. Down here we have the uh, speaker switches and everything, and this is the main power switch. Which, um, I have seen people who had this unit as well, and they tend to wear out those switches, so that's why I kind of try to not use these very often, and just have the thing pretty much always on. And since Alexa, Alexa does pretty much uh, all the switching on and off, so yeah, that's doing it. Down here we have the two potentiometers for the U-meters, and as I already said, yeah, Trying to adjust those doesn't change anything, at least with this one, since this one is broken over here. And the last one here, just our balance, volume, and master volume controls. Nothing too fancy, just a bunch of passive components, really. So yeah, a super simple amplifier, maybe get a little bit complex in certain areas, but still, I really, really like it. Right, like I've mentioned, uh, you actually don't have to open up the case of this amplifier, but I am definitely need to open it because, well, I want to get access to those potentiometers and clean them properly, or maybe even replace them if I uh, really want to, but cleaning should probably be way more than enough. So I've taken out the screws on this side, and let's see if I can get my fingernails in there. And the amplifier is now, it's well, <laughs> kind of hard to do, but the amplifier can slide out now fairly easily. But you probably need two hands for that, and good, good long and strong fingernails, which I actually have. <laughs> well, they are like free tools, so why not let them grow and actually use them for stuff like this? You can't do this without fingernails. Oh, well, of course, you can just use a screwdriver. Alright, let's see. It's a little bit stuck. There we go. Oh, apparently some of the hot glue leaked down into it, and that's why I was stuck. Maybe use a little bit too much, but yeah. Since I've said I'm just going to get rid of all of this and uh, replace it with something that's way, way, way better. Maybe we'll actually also take the transistors off and uh, apply new thermal compound, but I don't really think I need to do that. And yes, those things are also socketed, so yeah, fairly easy to replace everything. Alright, I had a quick few looks at uh, one of, uh, some of the components on here. Now that here is an uh, LM391N-80, which is pretty much just a uh, audio power driver. You can actually still get that chip, but it's quite expensive as you can see. But it's probably possible to use a different chip, which is cheaper. So, uh, yeah. Um, the transistors, of course, you can get those or use different ones. Doesn't really matter. So yeah, those are just some 7801 uh, transistors. Which you can probably still get. I haven't found uh, similar ones in the same package yet. But, uh, yeah, probably haven't looked at the right side as well. And, yeah, of course, you can use a different one. If you have the um, data sheet and everything. Alright, as you can see this amplifier has these old Dean type uh, plugs on it. 
Now I really despise those because, uh, well, you have this weird plug on it, which just looks terrible. And there is so little contact area for uh, speakers, well, <laughs> since you can actually pull quite a bit of load for this. I mean, uh, peak output power of this thing is 100 watts and constant power is 60 watts, so uh, yeah. That is quite a bit uh, for a connector this small. But uh, the other thing is, the if you actually look in here, there are small springs that actually make contact with these uh, metal pieces on here. And uh, those tend to wear out really fast, they tend to get dirty again also very fast, and the whole thing will just start uh, to well, sound terrible and uh, the fit of the whole thing in there, like so. As you can see that is not really um, good. There's a lot of, a lot of play in there, it's, not, it's, it ju it's just not a solid connection, but this could also be because well, these connectors are like over 40 years old. So uh, my approach is, well, I'm just going to use the standard laboratory uh, type connectors that I have pretty much on all of my test gear and it's pretty much uh, standard for me when I uh, do stuff with uh, speakers or I have these ones where I actually just uh, stick the bare cable in. As you can see on one of those I've already removed the original uh, one and the uh, <laughs> terrible hack job I did there as well as all the glue and uh, yeah, this sits in there really really well and this is actually the first attempt of, of me printing this thing uh, this was actually just supposed to be a test piece to see if it will actually fit and if I can change any dimensions on that to make a really tight and good fit but it turns out that that was actually already pretty much a perfect fit if I take one of the amps out the one that actually doesn't have the uh, new fancy connector in here turn it the right way around and as you can see uh, I have a small slot right in there and some other metal pieces surrounding it one of those pins will just exactly line up with the head heatsink there it's a little bit fiddly to do that all with one hand okay that one's in, that one's in but that has an absolute perfect fit uh, in there it's just really tricky to do that with one hand. You really need two hands to line that up properly. So, jump cut. Alright, and that is in there super nice and tight. It actually doesn't move at all already because the, the, it's really, really uh, tightly in there. It can still move up and down a little bit, but it just won't move any way backwards, forwards or whatever. So it really holds properly onto um, all those three spots. So yeah, um, I'm just going to put this one as high as I can, maybe not that high that it goes over the metal, so I can have a little bit of playroom, and I'm just going to glue that down with some uh, super glue, just so it doesn't move up and down, and it will have a solid connection in there. And if you ever want to get that thing out because one of those is broken, or the plastic breaks, or whatever, well, just pretty much apply a lot of force, and you'll like, break the glue immediately. So yeah, <laughs> that simple. So also fairly easy to maintain. Now, as you can see, well, one of the issues is since I want to add the protection relay in there and there's a total of, well, four connections that I have to switch on and off, um, I actually need a quite a big relay or well, I could use a smaller one, but the ones that I currently have are kind of large and I have to mount them on the other side and I don't have enough space on uh, this side at least because I also want to have access to the uh, transistors and the fuses down there. By the way, this modification also brings a really nice feature. You actually can now easily swap the fuses just by hand. Which before wasn't really possible, since you have this big plastic piece in the way. Yeah. And as you can see, there is a hole in that heatsink. And I'm going to add one right there as well. Because, well, I need to take the connections from here, feed them back and make them go into the relay. The relay will get the power from the uh, lightning circuitry in here. And the delay circuit, of course, it doesn't really pull a whole lot of power, especially it will pull less if I actually even, uh, if the LED modification that I'm thinking about works or not. If it doesn't work, it doesn't really matter. The light bulbs are quite inexpensive and, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then this thing will get rid of, I'll be rid of all the insane banging and noise it makes when you switch it on and off. Yeah. Oh yeah, by the way, 
also cleaned up a lot of the contacts in there since uh, I haven't I didn't actually do that the times I was in here before I just gave everything a brief clean but I didn't actually went in there with q-tips and had a proper cleanup of everything because some contacts really do look bad it actually looks like battery acid damage but no that's just one of the metals but this is just the uh, phono amplifier and uh, well <laughs> um, it does actually at least now sound a whole lot better so I've cleaned those contacts as good as I can maybe someday I will replace all of these uh, uh, contacts with some uh, different ones that are a little bit better or at least newer that uh, don't have any corrosion on them but uh, I'm going to do that if I actually do get some severe um, uh, sound issues which I currently don't have at all I just had it with the Fauna amp and that is now fixed as well so yeah and for the uh, volume and uh, master volume potentiometer as well, they just need a little bit more of contact cleaner and I also sprayed a tiny bit of amount of WD-40 in there. And that worked really well. The uh, two sections on the potentiometer which at four, uh, before didn't work at all, they work now. So that's really, really good. So yeah, all that's now left to do is drill another hole here. Build the two sockets. I'm actually going to mount the relays uh, on sockets so that if they ever go bad, you can whoop, swap them out. And all that on a small socket board, which just gets screwed down on top of here. And uh, yeah, it probably will just have a long cable going in there with a connector so that you can uh, pull the whole thing out, disconnect the relay from uh, the power source, and you're done. So that everything still stays uh, this type of modular like it is right now which is really really nice of this thing so yeah that's pretty much all that's left to do all right those are in and uh, everything fits nicely back together like it should and tada there we have our relay with the small delay circuitry on it and that's all wired up nicely everything fits perfectly in there. So yeah, now I just need to add a source of power for this. I don't think I actually do want to use the circuitry that's uh, for the light in here. I'm not sure how much current this thing can supply since everything runs through that resistor down there. And uh, so yeah, I just thought, hey, let's take one of these old phone charts I have lying around and add a boost converter to it to get the uh, 12 volts that I need. And uh, yeah, that should do nicely in this. So, yeah. Just take one of these apart, build another circuit, and wire everything back up. I currently don't have any uh, connectors for this, so I'm not going to add a connector in here right now. I'll do that later. Because, well, <laughs> yeah, ordering stuff from AliExpress takes months always uh, for, for the things to arrive. So, yeah. But uh, I'll definitely keep everything in here as modular as possible. I mean, even the relay can be taken out, so yeah, that's pretty good. There's actually a metal spring uh, that also comes with this, and I'm actually going to attach that. That just makes sure that uh, if there's a lot of vibration, the whole thing won't like accidentally wiggle itself loose and then just fall out, like so. And now the thing also makes a very satisfying clicking noise whenever you turn it on. I'll actually show you the circuitry for that right now. Here it is. And uh, yeah, it's super simple really. <laughs> Just a transistor, a potentiometer, which I actually added myself, that uh, allows you to adjust the time. If you and a capacitor, you can increase the size and will increase the delay, or just use a a, trend, a potentiometer there. In my case, I had to use a 50k one. I start with a 22k one, but it turns out that was not enough. So yeah, 50k it is, and that works perfectly. So it just takes this thing about two seconds uh, to switch on the output of the amplifier, and that should prevent that huge banging noise. Uh, going into my speakers Just so that they don't get destroyed by that. I will actually have to add the same thing on that stereo right there Because uh, this one also has a bit of an issue 
actually on this one it's a little bit worse. Yeah, that uh, is something that shouldn't happen so I'm going to uh, build a third of those circuits and just wire that in there and I'm probably also going to add some of these connectors on the back because those Dean speaker plugs are fucking terrible. Alright, some time has passed and as you can hear, music is playing, so that's always a good sign. So as you can see, these are all mounted in there nicely and as you as well, the relays are on there, which everything uh, seems to work just fine. But there was a bit of an issue. Um, after doing some tests, I actually found out that that bang you get, at least uh, well, on both channels, is actually quite random. It uh, takes it about six seconds, that was the longest one, or sometimes even more, a little bit. Not that insanely much, but uh, yeah, it takes a while to do that bang, and I don't want that going to the speaker, so that's why I actually added these uh, relays. It's nothing other than a delay circuit. So, unfortunately, uh, these circuits which are in here will only do a maximum of two seconds, other otherwise I would have to increase the size of that capacitor there. I already tried on this one increasing the size of the potentiometer, but that ended uh, unfortunately a bit destructive. And uh, it turns out that about 50k is the maximum that will work with these things, otherwise I would just have to go insane and uh, add a huge capacitor in there, and I just really don't want to do that. So, unfortunately, um, I had to add a bit of uh, new age technology um, that isn't just some passive components. Yep, and Arduino. Not really the uh, approach I wanted to do, but it works. And, uh, yeah, so pretty much what this circuitry does is it allows me to uh, drive these two relays. That's all it is. Also, it has the uh, power supply that I need on board, which is kind of nice. So yeah, that's not exactly the result I was aiming for, since, uh, well, I could have hooked up the radius directly to the Arduino and not uh, have had the need to actually build those uh, delay circuits, which are still on here. But hey, at least I can still say maybe they are for fine-tuning, if you really want that one switching on after the other or having them actually switch on exactly at the same time even though the Arduino can also do that. Uh, so yeah, uh, this pretty much is uh, where I'm going to leave it for now. Uh, there's still a few things I would like to do with the stereo but I'm not going to do that now. Um, I've actually tried a little bit more and the uh, what well, dead spot as I would like to call it now in that potentiometer actually came back. So it's just one tiny section of that potentiometer where there are some severe audio issues. But I'm just going to leave that for now since that is pretty much at the almost full volume. So yeah, you rarely go that far, and otherwise it gets absurdly loud. And yeah. But so far, everything is nice. Oh yeah, the other thing also. I'm actually not going to uh, do the LED upgrade right now, I'm just going to leave it as this is. And uh, yeah, if the light bulbs start to burn out, I may just go ahead and one by one slowly start to swap them over to LEDs, which uh, would be nice. And uh, well, since I already have an Arduino in here, I could also actually add a few more features to this thing, as well as uh, like a motorized potentiometer in here so you don't have to always stand up and walk to the stereo just to increase and decrease the volume since, well, this is from the uh, 70s. A control, uh, remote? Nah, you don't get that with this. You have to actually get off your ass off the couch, walk all the way to the front of your uh, TV sideboard and turn the knobs manually. No remote whatsoever. But hey, that's one thing that I could add to this since I'm only using two pins in total of the Arduino. Also I could add a few like um, security features in here that can actually monitor how much power is going through those uh, transistors and if it goes too high uh, that it will just immediately switch those off and add a buzzer in here which just pretty much beeps uh, until I reset the stereo, meaning at least turn it off and turn it back on. 
So yeah, there's just a few uh, safety precautions that I could actually add to this thing. But yeah, for now I'm going to leave it. And uh, yes, I also have some nice M4 screws uh, for the lid. So I don't have to use those worn out things anymore. Yeah. So, well, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. This isn't exactly what I had intended to do, but uh, this turned out to be the most practical and, well, also cheapest way to do it. I mean, the Arduino was like uh, three bucks and uh, the rest of the passives that are on there well, I just have a whole drawer lying uh, around with random stuff, so I usually have always a big stock of free stuff to build things. Since, uh, yeah, clearing out the junk bin at work is often worth it. So yeah, even though this isn't exactly the result I had aimed for, for maybe, maybe for some people it can be better with just that simple delay circuit in here. And again, I have the link to that in the description. So if you want to have a uh, sort of similar issue, but not as insane as it is with this unit, where the bang is pretty much uh, instant, like with that thing, then this circuit will suffice. I'm definitely going to build this one again and put that in that stereo there. Because, uh, well, in that case I do actually need it. This one doesn't have a huge delay as this one already has. But yeah. And yes, it's freaking awesome to have those uh, jacks on here. I mean, I have no contact issues whatsoever anymore, and it's just awesome. Those Dean connectors, these, they are just absolutely horrible. I don't even know who the hell came up with this, but it, it's terrible. I mean, just look at how tiny the contact surfaces in there. You you really want to let 60 or maybe even 100 or maybe even more watts flow through this thing? Yeah, you don't really, probably. Well, anyways, thank you for watching and goodbye.